Hi friends, welcome back to Akron After School Summer Program and welcome to Reading with Miss Myers and I am Miss Myers. So today we're going to read a story called Keb Needs a Home. Hmm, I wonder who Keb is and I wonder why he needs a new home. Hmm, well Keb is a hermit crab and we learned that hermit crabs outgrow their shells and need to find a new one. So this story is going to be an adventure. It's going to tell you all of the events that happened while Kev tries to find a new home to live in. And hopefully he finds the right one because always finding your place is what you need, right? So what I want you to do right now is I want to get your listening ears on and head over to the story. We're going to read the story and then we're going to make a video about what happened in the story and some lessons that we may have learned. All right, guys, I hope you have a lot of fun watching and enjoy. Bye, guys. Hi, friends. This is a story called Keb Needs a New Home or Needs a Home. It is written by Simone Tapio and illustrated by Terry Herman. The life of a hermit crab isn't too bad. They live near a seashore and they bask in the warm sun. They bathe in the salty sea and they play in the surf. The views are great too. Sunrises and sunsets can be very spectacular. And you can't beat the night sky with all the twinkling stars. But for one hermit crab, life was not so great. You see, Kev was a hermit crab of spectacular proportions. You might think that being the biggest crab for the seashore had its advantages. However, for Kev, the advantages were few and far between. One of the biggest problems with being big was that being big made it easy for hungry gulls to spot Keb as they hung like kites in the stiff sea breeze. But there was a bigger problem. Keb could not find a home that was big enough for him. Hermit crabs live in the discarded shells of snails. As a crab grows, it moves out of this out of one shell and into a bigger one the problem is that most snails are not not very big now that is a huge problem for the most normal sized crab but for Kev it was a problem for a great enormity Kev walked sideways sideways up and down the shore. He searched and searched for a big shell enough to use as its home. He waited and waited, hoping that soon, one day, a large shell would wash up on shore. While he waited to find a proper home, Kib lived in a large hole in a rock. Now, the hole was a fine home for most animals, but it was not a proper home for a hermit crab. Whenever Kib wanted to go out, he felt naked. The other hermit crabs made fun of him, and the gulls swooped down to make him for their dinner. Keb always managed to escape the gulls, but the teasing from the other crabs hurt to the core of his feelings. To hide his nakedness, Keb tried everything. First, he gathered feathers he found along the shore and strung them together with old fishing line. Then he wrapped, himself, wrapped them around his soft shell. But the other crabs thought he looked silly. Like a cat now, they said. He thinks he's a bird. The next thing you know, he will try to fly. Cap's feelings were hurt even more. He threw off the feathers and returned to his hole in the rock. Next, he gathered seaweed and wove it together to make a fine-looking suit. But soon the seaweed began to rot and smell. He the smell was so bad that not even Kev could stand it, so he threw away his seaweed suit and returned to his hole in the rock. Peering out of his hole one morning, Kev noticed something strange had washed ashore. 
he crawled out of the hole to take a closer look. As he got closer, he could see it was a boot. A very fine boot it was. The boot was bright blue, which was Cab's favorite color in the world. He had always admired the blue starfish in the tide pools, and he thought the blue crabs were the most handsome of all crabs. He looked for a blue snail shell for a home when he was a smaller crab, but he had never found one. Cab examined the boot more closely. It was made of rubber and would be perfect for stormy days when the cold wind and rain blew off the sea. And on the toe of the boot there were two large eyes. Aha, thought Keb, those eyes will surely scare off the swooping skulls. And best of all, the boot was large. Keb looked inside for it to size it up. The boot had almost definitely big enough for Keb's enormous body. He crawled into the boot. It was a perfect fit. Keb strutted down the shore, wearing his new home. The gulls were frightened by the two large eyes looking at them. All the other crabs oohed and awed as Keb walked by. They were envious of Keb's beautiful new home. Keb was not the bit, only the biggest crab on shore, but he was also the most handsome. The next day, Keb wanted, had an open house. All the other crabs came to see Keb's home, and they all brought him gifts. Keb was no longer the laughing stock of all crabs. He was the envy of the seashore. The end. Thank you guys for joining me. Hi friends. So welcome back. We learned a lot about Keb and him trying to find a home and all of the trials that he went through. Right? We learned that he was the laughing stock of all the other crabs and hermit crabs. And we learned that the seagulls were go trying to go after him and he kept trying to find a seashell big enough, but he was so big that he couldn't find one. And you know, in life, it's really hard to find something that you love so much and that fits you and is you, right? So this is a story that I kind of brought out um, that the lesson is just be you. And you know, if you just take your time and wait patiently, you know, good things will come to you, and and this story definitely shows that. So I want you to, for your uh, little activity today, I want you to draw me a picture of something that you love the most. It could be anything. It could be a toy. It could be an animal. It can be anything you want. Just something that makes you you. So just go ahead and draw me a picture and add it to the slide. If you do need help, there's a little link to help you um, up on the slideshow. So have fun and I will see everybody soon. Bye! Thank you for joining Reading with Miss Myers.